Good day. Welcome to the bike shop. Today we are embarking on a restore. We have plenty of those going on around here, but this one we haven't started yet, and it's a pretty cool bike. Here it is. 1959 Sears Space Liner. Now this bike uh, is in here for repairs. It's one of my client's bikes and he wants it repaired, uh, restored as closely as possible to the original with a few exceptions. That being the uh, SCP sticker is to stay on the seat and this, to reuse this original seat the way that it is. And uh, other than that, uh, we'll try to get the original decals, get this chrome cleaned up, as well as get the, the dash deck part that goes here. And there's also a flat rack that goes in the back here to match. I don't have either of those items yet. I'm going to have to try to find them. But um, other than that, the rest of the bike is here. So I'm going to get started uh, with some of the other work, uh, most notably the wheels. You can see that uh, they're in pretty rough shape. The rims aren't so bad, luckily. Uh, I can reuse those and get that rust off of there, but uh, it's going to need some new spokes, it looks like. Same thing in the back, got another broken spoke here, and um, we'll have to rebuild both of these wheels. So why don't I just get right to it? I'm going to get started with the disassembly here and take this thing apart. The front wheel wasn't even tight, so it just kind of fell out, but that's a really cool Springer fork, one of the earliest ones I'd say. like. Well, not the earliest. I mean, Springer forks go back a long way. But this bike is cool. It'll clean up nicely. I just hope I can find all the right parts. I've got tires on the way. <clears throat> I've already got the chain chain guard decal. I ordered a C-tube decal, but you can see that it's quite a bit smaller and the wrong color than the original one here. So I have another one on order that is uh, the correct one. I just didn't wasn't paying attention when I ordered it so um, other than that the only thing I'm gonna have to buy that I don't have so far are some pedals these ones are pretty worn out um, they're not supposed to spin like that and uh, I guess a guy could re-rivet those in there but I don't have the tooling to do that so other than that it seems to still work just fine so I'll take this rear wheel off and we'll just start going from there state yep Sears tires can't get these anymore we'll be replacing these with some good old Kendas some of the same size and we've got some 26 175 white walls on the way but they're they're Kenda tires that's all you can get in uh, 2021 that's brand new anyway so actually the next thing I'm gonna do is spray this thing down with some tri-flow little tri-flow or anything I'm gonna have to take apart out of there. <clears throat> Next I'll go for the fenders here, get these fenders off, which I think they're all just flathead screws. Maybe a couple Phillips screws. I'm going to probably get both. bike that's 61 years old you know that's uh pretty darn good actually 62 now huh that Phillips that looks like a Phillips screwdriver this one's a bit tighter I might have to grab a different screwdriver same
Whoa, what's up with this one? Oh, it's just got paint and crud all over it. It's a flathead like the others. I just couldn't see that because it was full of dirt. So that's when it pays off to spray everything with penetrating oil first. Just to just in case. You just cause you almost can guarantee that it's gonna get stuck and have problems. Yeah, there we go. Got it. It's all the same stuff. This one just has a broader head on it. Cool. Your fender's out. You gotta be careful here is you've got a little reflector back here that we've gotta preserve. Looks like it's got that plastic silver paint which most likely will get taken. Yeah, I, I can guarantee if I put that in the purple power to let it soak for any given time, it's gonna peel that silver off. So I have to be very careful washing that section right there. I'm not gonna be able to do much other than just water, maybe a little mild detergent. Not the purple power though. This stuff is gnarly. It will cut right through that plastic paint. Take it right off. I do that is to save my chain tool. Chunk of chain right there so when I go to take the links out. like there was a red background behind the space liner letters so that's gonna look a little different unless I paint it first which I suppose I could do this comes off separately because this again is painted with that plastic silver metallic paint and you can already see that it's coming off if I dunk that in my purple power it's done for now I guess I could go ahead and strip the paint with the purple power and then repaint it that would be an option yeah I think that's what I'll do because the paints already coming off of it anyway so I'll show you guys see what's on there now I'm gonna throw it in the solvent tank and you'll see when I take it out that paint will come off like no problem it's probably full of lead and shit anyway don't want it on there put some lead free paint in there and that's probably why it looks so good too by the way <laughs> it's leaded. Not bad. Again, not seen worse. That's not so bad. The bearings are just a little dry. Normal stuff. Just gotta take that apart. Grind all that stuff out now. I'm gonna take the, the chain ring off of there so I can get it cleaned a little bit better behind everything because this is going to take some serious cleaning that's uh 60 years of grease and dirt embedded into the steel there usually these aren't terribly tight they're not supposed to be crazy tight There we go. One disassembled crank cassette from the space liner. So we'll just throw all this in the solvent tank, let it start soaking. Hopefully the seat comes out. I I hate it when the seats don't come out.
we're good. Nice. It's pretty good. Things last when you chrome plate them. And so that's it. That's our disassembly right there. Everything's out. Got our headset out. I'll leave the cups in there. We'll just go ahead and wash those inside the frame. There's no need to remove any of that stuff to do an overhaul on it. Same with the bottom bracket cups. We would only need to remove those if they were damaged or if we were changing styles, something like that. And um, heck yeah. sandpaper does a pretty good job of taking superficial rust off the chrome. Okay, so now all the parts are clean. Got everything polished up. This here is gonna be repainted. I'm surprised as much of that metallic paint stayed on there as it did, but I'm gonna paint over it anyway. Um, probably the same thing with the, uh, actually that was the only plastic part I think I had to worry about. But uh, basically ready to put it all back together. Got everything washed. It still needs to be polished. There's a few water stains on it still, but that'll be fine. We'll polish that out later. And then we've got the bare frame sitting here. Again, got some water spots on it. We'll polish this up once we get the frame set put together. And I'm thinking, I've got two different polishes. I've got uh, actually three, but I don't use the bow shield anymore for polish. I do use this a lot, this finish line showroom polish and protectant. This is awesome. This is like armor all for bikes, basically. And then there's, uh, what is the other stuff that I use? Oh, only for like chrome and polished surfaces, you've got the California Customs Purple Metal Polish, which works great. So I may end up going that route too, because uh, this might really clean up quite nicely with that metal polish, because it's a little bit more abrasive. This adds a layer of protection. The Purple Metal Polish actually takes a layer of oxidation and a little bit of metal off and that's how it works it's etching so anyway i'm gonna go ahead and uh start putting this thing back together i like to use this web grease for <clears throat> things like headsets and bottom brackets and i'll use it for wheels too if uh i'm not going for performance So next I gotta actually put the crank back together. That's easy to do though. Got all the parts here. First thing is the bearing race on the inside. Wait. Wrong. <laughs> gotta be this guy first. Got our chain ring. We have one spacer. Then we have our bearing range.
Doesn't need to be crazy tight, but pretty snug. Now we're ready. I like this stuff in particular because it's waterproof. It's not likely to get washed away very easily. So I like to use it for headsets and bottom brackets because they're pretty susceptible to moisture, especially if the bike is left outside. This is a little bit different than, but you'll see this on old Schwinn's too. Uh, Hiawatha's uh, stuff from the 50s, 60s, 40s, whatever. Okay, so once you've got the bearing uh, race kind of hand tight, I didn't realize this, but this little washer here allows you to use the tool that I like to use. It has the little prongs right there. You just need to install it. And then there's a little, groove in here. Tab just needs to slide over the groove. Of course it's too big for this one. There's another tab right there and it just pops in like that. That way you can kind of tighten things up and not have to remove any parts. Which comes in handy. Moving parts kind of sucks. This is the pre-wash here, just kind of wipe off your metal. I'm going to use purple metal polish to polish this frame. So that's my next step. The frame set's put back together, uh, except for the little hardware for the Springer fork at the bottom, but I'll do that when I get ready to mount the wheels. For now, I'm just going to polish the thing. I'm going to start with a little bit of this stuff, and you got to be careful. It doesn't really like to soak up too well. you got to kind of go slow with it. This will like take all the dirt and crap and it will prep the surface better for the polish. Help it to uh, react a little bit better, etch the surface a little bit better. You can smell it working, it's like an acid. It smells like an acid anyway. Now we got the purple metal polish.
this is first, we'll still do a polish of Teflon after all the decals and everything are installed. Oh, that good enough. So, now we got the frame set put back together, except for these little brackets. Like I said, these will go on when I install the wheels. And that's actually gonna be the next step is to uh, put this aside. Now that we've got the frame set, basic, the basic re, uh, frame set reassembled here. Um, the next step is to rebuild the wheels because they are atrociously destroyed. If you take a look over here, these wheels are awful. Both of them have broken spokes. The spokes are weak sauce anyway, so we need to put some heavier spokes in there, or at least some just some newer spokes in there. And once we take everything apart, I gotta make sure that the uh, rims aren't bent, which uh, they very well could be. So hopefully that's not the case. Uh, but if it is, we'll just find some new rims, put those on there instead. So I don't think this guy's afraid to spend any money on this bike, so we're not gonna hold back on getting new parts if we need them. Anyway. Uh, we'll move on to the next stage, another day, sun just went down, it's time to put my bikes up. So we'll talk to you later.